We are here with the Axemen. Tell us your name and the band you play for. Uh, Jimbo, Sarcastic. Who made you want to pick up the guitar? Uh, my brother Steve, rest in peace. Uh, he was a guitar player his whole life. I was really close to him uh, growing up. and uh, So him, of course, and then time back. So yeah, those two guys. Are you self-taught or did you take lessons? Uh, when I first started playing, late 90s, um, I started taking lessons of steam music, and I took I took probably like five or six lessons from uh, a guy, uh, Ronnie Fields, super cool guy, and then he, he left, and the replacement that was giving me lessons was Andy McKee. I'm sure you guys all know Andy McKee, he's a worldwide sensation. But I only took like two lessons from him because me and him just didn't click. Not personally, but I just didn't. I loved Ronnie so much, and yeah. So I only lasted two times with, with uh, Andy McKee, but can you imagine if I would have stuck with him? <laughs> I'd be really good. Uh, can you read music, or can you read tabs? Uh, come on. Tabs, yeah. Music, no. <laughs> But honestly, I'm not even a, a huge fan of tabs because I don't really know a whole lot of cover songs and maybe I should, maybe it would help my guitar playing, but I don't even like reading tabs. I like I like sh somebody showing me in person how to play it. I, I learn better that way. Do you feel you have your own sound and tone? Oh, for sure, definitely. I've, I've been told a lot of times that Good or bad, it's a very unique tone. Um, yeah, it's lots of highs, lots of mids. Uh, it's not very thick. It's a thin sound, but in, a, in, in the construct of a band, it fits in perfectly. You know. Tell us about your guitars. Well, here's just two of the 300 I have. <laughs> uh, this is my baby, uh, 2004. Washburn Dime ST Pro. Uh, pretty sought after guitar. I've been offered a lot of money for it, but it doesn't matter. I'll never sell it. It's a special guitar. And here's another one. Uh, it's a Jackson Kelly. I had some uh, the Mark Holcomb Alpha and Omega pickups put in it, and it just opened it up. And it's a great guitar. Uh, what about pickups? Pass passive or active? Uh, Younger days, I was all about the active because I thought that was the cool thing and that was the metal thing. But the longer I've been playing, the more I like passive pickups. They just, they seem more real and you never have to worry about the fucking battery going out or something. But yeah, I'm all about passive pickups now. Uh, let's go into amplification. Uh, here's two of my amps. I have a couple more at home, but these are the ones I use on stage. Um, basically what I do, I use a, a guitar processor, amp modeler, and I use, I use that as the preamp, and I run those to the, to the, uh, effects loops of both amps, so that's why you don't see a cord sticking out of the front of them. Uh, I run those in, like, stereo. Um, so this is a Bugera 333XL. Basically, it's the poor man version of the, uh, PV. JSX, the Joe Satriani head. Uh, really awesome head, honestly. I could run straight through it and it would sound good. But And the Dime uh, amp half stack here, I got it more as a as a collector item type thing, because I'm a big Dime fan, obviously. But uh, it just happens to sound a little more beefier than the Mesa does, as far as the, the speakers. So. Using them both in unison really kind of complements each other pretty well, so I'm happy with that. Uh, do you have a pedal board? And tell us about that. Oh, yeah, I just did. Uh, the one I use in the band is a is a Boss GT100 effects processor. Uh, it's like a 10 year old pedal, but damn, if you know how to dial in, you get some really awesome tones. And uh, for home use, I just picked up a uh, uh, Head Rush gig board and I'm just now starting to mess with that so it's pretty fun. Uh, tell us about your train rig in detail. Uh, 
I don't know. I mean, I, what I got going right now, I love the tone so much. I don't think I want to mess with it. So, and you know, I use the effects loops on these on these amps, so I don't really use their their preamps. So honestly, I don't know. I guess give me a wall of PRS, uh, Archon, Hundreds, Mesa Boogie Heads. You know, the the ones that normally everybody, all the metal guys like. But I'm I'm happy with what I got. What guitarist can you not stand? Oh boy. Um. Be like personality or playing. I don't know. Um. I don't think I have any any guitarists that I can't stand. I mean, I maybe singers I can't stand, but not guitar players. Is tone more important or is technique? Uh, that that's a that's a kind of a loaded question because you kind of need both. I mean, a lot of your tone comes from your from your technique and your playing and your picking, and but. You know, having that fucking that, that tone that you get dialed in, it's just it's magic. You can't describe it. Name your top five guitarists. Dimebag, of course. Well, imagine that. Um, uh, I guess maybe not Zach Wild number two, but in there. Um, Honestly, I like James Hetfield because I think I, I really think he's an underrated guitar player because he's not the lead player in Metallica, but goddamn, he is the king of downpicking. And if you're a guitar player, you know how crazy hard it is to downpick everything. So him for sure. Um, probably none of the Slayer guys. Well, Jeff Hammond was pretty good. Kerry King, not so much, but Jeff Hanneman for sure. And then last but not least, uh, I have like the, tick, the top clock ticking sound. Uh, Randy Rose. Who is the most overrated guitarist? I don't like that guy from, from uh, Lincoln Park because he wears a stupid headphones. So I mean, I, I don't think he's overrated, but I just I think he's annoying. <laughs> Who would you like a one-hour private sit-down lesson with? Anyone dead or alive? Um, I don't. Well, I guess Dimebag, of course. But uh, I've been taking lessons from my uh, local guy R.J. Soldani at uh, Supersonic Music, so I'm having an awesome time taking lessons from him, so that's cool with me. Alright, this wraps up the interview from the Axe Pen.